Hey, so we've uh, had Black Friday and I took the opportunity to pick up a few of these TP-Link smart Wi-Fi plugs and they're pretty neat devices. They've got a nice uh, iOS app that comes with them. They connect to your Wi-Fi, you can turn them on and off, you can set up timers, you can do all kinds of clever things with them. So we like these. Um, one of the issues I had with them though is that on the bottom of the box it tells you the system requirements are a mobile device uh, uh, using iOS 9 or higher or an Android at 4.1 or higher. Um, so it does say, um, but what, what I didn't realize at the time is that those are the only devices you can use um, to actually talk to these things. Uh, yes, you can use um, voice commands uh, through any of these little partners, um, but you can't control them via the web. Um, and that uh, makes it a closed sort of ecosystem and, and means it's a whole other uh, set of things for me to purchase and uh, yeah, belong to. So. I didn't really want to close API, so I had a little look around, um, and what I'm going to do is just switch to the uh, implementation of the app itself, um, so you can see how the app works uh, on a on a mobile handset. Um, so if I flip this down, one sec, two here. Hopefully, you'll get a picture of my phone. Okay, yes, here we go. Uh, and if I go into Casa, what you'll see is the app will load up and here are my lamps. Um, so I've got a lamp, a lounge lamps, table lamp, and TV itself. And uh, if I come over to this, which is my solution, um, this is a GitHub account. Uh, that's um, all the sources on here, so you can pull it straight down. Uh, there's a code pen, so you can go and experiment with it and see what it does. Um, but this uh, this GitHub account at ARALSOP TP Link Smart Switch Web Client will basically create this interface for you. And what's happening here is uh, I'm using the settings tab to capture a username and password that I used when I signed up inside this app. Uh, and then I'm writing out to the um, API uh, endpoint. I can show you some of these things happening. I'm just going to squeeze the window a little bit so that you can't uh, see my token. Um, so if I refresh this, you'll see it. Uh, so out to Angular, go and pick up some Angular stuff. And then these are all tokens coming in, and I'm now reaching out to TP-Link Cloud, okay, and pulling in an EU WAP TP-Link Cloud, uh, and so on, all the way through this, just to keep pulling in uh, my information here uh, and get that switch status back in. And that'll just keep pulling those for me. So that's uh, it's a fairly useful um, little utility. Let me wind it up, let me put my password in here without you looking. Okay, uh, and You'll see that they are connected if I turn this off. You can't do that, that's right. If I turn that off like that, and I wait, you'll see this one turns off. And if I turn this on, then hopefully that one over there will turn on again. Yeah, there it goes. So they are in sync with each other, and they're using that same um, TP Link cloud, and I'm just hitting it and hitting it and hitting it. I'm going to flip this back for a second uh, to me because you know, it's far more fun to see how that actually happens in here. If I turn this off, Christmas tree goes out. And if I turn the table lamp out, it gets a little darker. And indeed, it gets very dark if I turn them all off. So, what this gives me is the ability to control one of these uh, using the web. Uh, and indeed, any browser uh, that can access the web can do that. Uh, so, it's a, it's a fairly good UI. Um, but yeah, I can run that on a Kindle, I can run it on a Kindle Fire, I can run it on a Windows mobile. Uh, I don't need to use the Android or iOS devices that it, it told me I would require. Which works for me because I have an iOS device, um, but my other half uses a Windows phone. And so if I leave her here in the day without those devices, um, you know, without a handset that, that works, you can't turn anything on or off unless we have voice control going. Uh, as it happens, uh, we do. So I can say, Alexa, turn off the lounge lamps. Okay. And she, and she will, um, which then plunges us into the darkness. You can see the web UI updates here. Uh, Alexa, turn on the lounge lamps. Okay. Uh, so, uh, in that sense, that's pretty, it's pretty good. It's a pretty handy device, and particularly with this open API, you can then get in and out and do things. Um, one of the things that uh, became interesting to me, because I have a number of automated devices in my house already, was to work out how small I could get this page. Um, because uh, I didn't really want to host it on a web server, I wanted to host it on a microprocessor. Um, now Angular lets me do a lot of these things because the actual source in the page, if I look at the page itself, uh, if you know anything of Angular, basically you have these things like uh, ng-repeat, 
which means you can build our simple block that's going to repeat each time it finds a certain thing, a certain object, uh, or array of objects uh, in its memory. Uh, and so what is a fairly small and simplistic bit of markup, most of this is just text about how the thing works, um, which is all in the About tab, um, can actually be used to iterate through and pick up uh, you know, a number of devices from that remote system and then build a UI for each one. And the advantage of keeping it all small is that um, I can run the whole thing on something small like this. So this is a uh, ESP8266 chip, basically. Um, this one is actually a D1 Mini Pro. Uh, these are about eight pounds. And down here is the. Um, oh, we started it. Down here is actually the uh, the output from this chip. So if I reset it, I think do like that, and then that'll turn off. And hopefully, this will reconnect and start pumping out some information for us. Okay, the output can run. While that starts up, is that going to start? Oh, I should probably plug it in. Yeah, I should definitely plug it in. Let me plug it into this one over here. Uh, say goodbye to the phone. Okay, I'll be there. Oh, whoops. Okay, I didn't want to kill all that. One second. When recording a video, invariably you quit the app. You really don't want to. It's just the way the world works. I should be left holding this blue light. Okay, good. Right. Do you see what you want I'll be there. Do we have a device here? Yes, we do. Good, okay. So, here's my output, output from this. There's my Wi-Fi relay. Great. And that behind here is my window with me in it. So, uh, I'm running custom code on here, but some of the code that I'm running uh, is actually, let's see what, which IP address we're on, we are on 192.168.32, so I'm going to put that in here instead, and say take me 32, and you'll see this response and says, oh okay, I'm uh, requesting a homepage, requesting the script. So I'm serving that script file uh, and the homepage file itself, but uh, after that, I'm, um, I'm allowing everything else to come in via CDN, uh, so you can see actually all of these things come out from uh, uh, Google APIs. So I don't have to, I don't have to serve uh, the Angular scripts themselves, I don't have to serve the CSS, um, I can just pull all that down from CDNs, which means the payload from the server is pretty small, uh, and I merge that then with a config file on here. Uh, so there's scripts, so status PHP here, which is not really a PHP file at all, um, but that's coming back and saying this is blue light at version 1, it is 29, minute, uh, 29 seconds past midnight, uh, 18 minutes past midnight. Um, we are powered, we're not in daylight savings. The next event is going to be 462 minutes. I'm not going to skip it. Uh, I'm not using the timer currently. My last action was powered on, and this is my array of events. And I have standardized this response um, so that when I turn this device on, uh, it knows uh, not only uh, the things that it can do, so I can turn it on and off. That's exciting, isn't it? Um, I can turn the timer on and make it do these things so it'll wake up automatically uh, tomorrow morning and turn on at 8am um, and power down at 8.20 to remind me to take the children to school. Um, but also I can go into the network devices and it will find these TP-Link devices for me which I can still turn on and off from its interface on 32. At the top here, the blue light of a microprocessor is its own interface. Okay, so I can turn that on and off. So I have now a common UI uh, which is allowing me to control this device itself um, and the other uh, network devices here in the house which are my TP link devices. Now what I'm going to do is just reach over and turn on another lamp. It's going to take a couple of seconds to warm up probably. There we go. Um, I'm not sure if you can see the difference between that. I might just turn off the, the main light uh, there. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to refresh this page. And what you'll see is, hopefully, in my network devices list, is you'll see, yes, here, uh, the TP-Link devices are there, and blue light has come in, and I'm hoping to get another one coming in as well. We should get a table lamp pop-up or a um, bedside lamp pop-up. And I'm running around the local network here, now trying to make the quest to find out what's around. So, did I manage to pull it back? Not entirely sure I got it. Devices, got those three straight away. 
You can see it hunting here. I'm just going through a range of things. Okay, so bedroom, a modded table lamp from the range. I can turn that on or off using this device. Uh, and also, I can turn on and off this blue light uh, using this common interface. And I can turn on and off the lounge lamp. So that is uh, the TP-Link devices being controlled in the same UI as a ESP8266 controlled uh, bedroom lamp with a relay in it, which should be probably just about here firing, um, and this little blue light, which I could you know, do anything with, um, if that's uh, you know that's 3.3 volt uh, ready, and I can you know open close relays, shine lights, turn on motors, close windows, uh, feed gaps, etc. Uh, from here, so this becomes the standardised UI. Now there's a few more things that I'm putting out here. So firstly, on this uh, address, on this 32 chip here, if I go to port 81 and I look at the uh, setup XML file, you'll see I'm running a second web server. And that second web server is able to generate what looks like a Belkin smart socket. Um, and of course, uh, you know, it is not. Um, but uh, it looks sufficiently like one that I can convince Alexa that it is one. Alexa? Uh, turn off the little blue light. I've found several devices mm. matching that name. Okay. Which one did you want? The blue light. Okay. okay. Um, so she can do that. You can see down here the debugger tracking along with me. Alexa, turn on the blue light. Okay. Okay, so she can get it back on again. Uh, and these update again as I go through. So she's able to control that. Uh, the other thing that I'm serving uh, on this, on port 80, uh, rather than 81 though, um, is uh, features. So my features file here is not really PHP, um, it's actually a JSON file. Uh, I call it PHP because it makes it easier for me to build things locally with a PHP server. Um, this tells me the address it's running at, the name of the uh, device, uh, its description, and then I get details like is it powered, what's the URL to turn it on, and what's the URL to turn it off. So. Uh, Action PHP Ray True turns it on. Um, so if I were to turn it off, um, back to here. So it definitely shouldn't refresh that page. Um, let's get hunt around again for it. So I can do it from here, yes. uh, Turn that off. Mm, is that off? Oh, you're still thinking. Okay. I should let it finish thinking. Okay, blue light off. Okay, if I come back into here. Say and I paste in this URL. I'm going to try again with, with the right URL. I did say I'm going to slash should it be very true. Uh, it'll turn on uh, and I get this response through there. It's turned on manually. And it doesn't really matter what this URL is. The main thing that matters is that whenever I run features, um, I map the on and the off URL. So anything that will receive an on or off URL can now be integrated into this UI, which means. I have a uh, blue light here, which is an EFPA266 sitting on a USB lead, uh, which is pretending to be a uh, Wemos uh, smart switch here, as far as Alexa is concerned. Don't answer. Good. Um, I have down here a bedroom, a modded table room, uh, table lamp from the range. Uh, can't quite get it in the shop. There we go. It's modded. It looks like that. I'm going to close that to see it, I'm going to fire those. Not very exciting, uh, it does turn on and off. Um, and then I have all the things that are running in the background here using the TP link switches, which I can again turn on or off uh, from this same UI. So, what it's given me is the, uh, the ability to basically create one UI which is able to serve a setup XML file if a uh, Amazon device wants to find out what it is, um, which can read the features uh, JSON file from any of the devices that are on my local network, scanning around the local IP range to find these devices. Um, you can see it hunting for them until it brings them in, um, so that I get a list of all the things that I've made uh, that configure and, and what they do. Um, and then underneath that, a list of the TP Link devices which are serviced uh, by my credentials at the TP Link API, um, all within one UI and a UI that is uh, can be served on any modern web browser. So I, I can do it on a Kindle Fire, I can do it on a on a tablet, I can do it on a uh, I can do it on a fairly old Kindle to be honest, which is actually quite a good light switch because it has a really good battery life. Um, and I can do it 
from an uh, OS X machine like this. Um, whereas with the official uh, Casa app here, uh, although it says it plays well with others, I can't make it do anything. 